Uh, I'd like to uh, read from my book, uh, my little first book, which I hope will be followed soon by my second book. Uh, I'd like to read from uh, a story that's set in a town called Vigan, mm. which is our, uh, which is a UNESCO World Heritage uh, site uh, in the Philippines, uh, quite similar to Hoi An. So I'd like to do that because uh, we came from Hoi An. We did our writer's residency in Hoi An, and um, I was very happy to have finished writing a difficult essay that I've been struggling with the whole year. So I'd like to uh, thank Rice, of course, and our uh university for, uh, for the fellowship to this writer's residency. So it's called Comadrona, which is uh, the Filipino word for midwife. Which is also Spanish, Comadrona, uh, and it's about this uh, this uh, woman, young woman, who goes to Vigan looking for her father, because uh, she she thought that that her father was from uh, this town, and instead she meets uh, a woman uh, who sells uh, clay jars called burnai. So this is uh, how they meet. It was difficult to make a quick choice. There were hundreds of jars. I imagined that this must be how God feels when he looks upon his creatures and wonders how each one can be so different and yet so alike because we are fashioned from the same clay. I went around the display area twice and seeing that she was watching me, finally chose one which was tall with rings around it. I loved it even when I discovered that it had a crack on its body that could not be repaired. I showed it to her and haggled for the sake of haggling. 50 pesos, madam. Look, it has a crack, I teased. She said, I'll give it to you for 80 pesos. If you don't like the price, you leave. I wondered why she was so impertinent, but realized that she was an Ilocana after all. I, I almost left just to spite her, but I wanted that jar, so I handed her 100 pesos. As she wrapped the jar in old newspaper, she muttered to herself, it is the brokenness that makes it beautiful. I felt then a dreadful desire to know this woman, to probe the brokenness that taught her to value this jar the way I did. In my mind, I heard my friends warning me against my folly. No, Eva. Go, take the jar and go. It had only been three months since that other woman finally dumped me to go back to her perfect marriage. My friends had to endure my drinking, my crying, my endless soliloquies. It was fair warning. I knew they were right. Instead, I removed my shades, sat on a big jar turned upside down, and asked for her name. Do you know that these jars will not break under your weight because they go through the fire twice as long as ordinary terracotta pots? She asked. Really? That's good. I hate those signs that go, lovely to look at, nice to hold, but if you drop it, it's considered so. I never dare touch things that come with such warnings. But the temptation, she said, suddenly smiling. She then picked up a rock, using it to tap the jar I was sitting on. It produced a clinking sound like crystal goblets. The back of her hand slid past my cough, and I sighed inaudibly, thankful that I had just shaved. I wondered if she had meant to touch me. Without dropping her hold on my eye, she said, that's how to tell if it's real burnai. Next time you should check first. My name is Lumen. The way her mouth rounded on the syllables of her name, I felt the sound swirling in my head, echoing. Lumen. I gave my name to her then, wanting her to take it in her mouth and love it the way I thought she did hers. But she did not say my name until that evening in the birthing room. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, 